Ah, g'day there. It's Paul Lyons from paintings.nz and this evening the idea is that I'll paint a, uh, a beach scene, twilight, with some clouds and the sun shining through the clouds or past the clouds um, and rays of light. I can manage to achieve rays of light coming down through the uh, past the, the cloud and um, some fairly distinct cloud which I've sketched in and then some somewhat less distinct cloud underneath it. Um, and then other bits of cloud which are not quite as important but it's this area around here that's I hope going to catch the attention. Um, so I'm not trying to uh, reproduce the exact shape, shape of the uh, the clouds in the photograph that I'm using as a reference but just generally the uh, the feeling of uh, um, what the sky is like in this particular image and then um, the majority of the image is going to be um, the uh, yeah, I'll put that down a bit lower is going to be the uh, um, the, the, the beach the wet beach with the uh, the water near the uh, near the sea reflecting um, the sun darker areas around here and then there's, since there's dark cloud up here be a reflection of dark cloud there so this will be the brightest spot in the painting don't put the center of attention right in the middle of the painting they say so not that I deliberately flout the rules, but uh, well, you don't always have to do exactly what the rules say. So let's uh, um, let's put in a bit of um, water, and we're going to. Um, use uh, yellows and reds around the horizon and whitish and then of course the blue of the sky up, uh, up a bit higher so let's put in a fairly um, generous dose of yellow and going into this cloudy area as well so that's um, the yellow contribution and then um, a bit of red quite careful with red because it's very very strong um, pigment and then having said you can't kind of be terribly careful with the red you end up not using enough of it but uh, that's probably oops the sort of thing we're after. And hmm, let me just a, ooh, a tad, he says, adding too much. Hmm. 
we'll just see how that goes. So we'll let that um, settle and mix and uh, apply some more water up in the sky. Um, we're going around the cloudy areas and um, a lot of this is going to be blue but um, we'll let it meld I think a little bit with some of the other maybe with some of the other colour that's there. Um, where's the water gone? Let some of that yellow creep up if it wants to, and um, I'm adding more or painting over the area that's got the, the water on because it takes quite a lot of, of water to uh, thoroughly soak the uh, surface of the paper. All right, so now let's uh, now let's put a bit of blue in. Um, I've gone back to uh, the brush that I started with, which has got a bit of the yellow red colour still in it. Um, to ooh, quite a lot of the yellow red colour still is in that corner anyway. Um, to to uh, just try and um, get some consistency between the colours used in various parts of the sky. Uh, so the colours should mix and blend. Oh, it's got a lot of blue in it, hasn't it? So I might just use the other side of the brush, the one that I didn't put the uh, the pigment into. Um, most of the time. There's a variety of streaks of various colour sort of mixed together in amongst those um, regions. It's having a sort of non cloud non skyy colour. Of course the blue and yellow are mixing together but to uh, produce something green, so I might just um, add a bit of dark. Am I getting dark on there. Mm. And oh, we'll leave that for the moment. Um, I don't really want a dark blotch there, so we'll take that away. It's gone blue, but it's going to be fairly dark anyway when we get round to it. But in the meantime, um, what I want to do is to uh, 
um, remove some of that pigment just in the areas where the uh, um, where the cloud might be shading the sky. So we've got areas where the uh, so the sun being there is um, catching various bits of cloud which I haven't got. Oops, it's there. Um, so those are um, Playing outwards from the sun. Might even have something down there if it's just behind that. Um, hmm. We're doing the wrong thing. We're going the wrong direction. Must have picked up enough pigment on the uh, on the brush to uh, transfer itself to the surface of the paper. So we'll clean off the brush a bit and then try and remove some of that, which is. A bit of a a crass effect. Let's just try and remove some of those darker edges that the pigment is creeping into, and yeah, that'll have to do, I think. Um. Yeah, it's probably a bit better. All righty. Um, now, that's a fair amount of skying. Um, now let's see if we can do some relatively naturalistic looking clouds. So again, with the water to start with. Um, and. Spreading it pretty liberally over the uh, over the cloudy areas. So this is where we want pigment to spread um, over these areas where the water is. Now, um, I have to refresh that wet area at some stage, so I might just keep this brush um, clean and use something else for putting on the pigment. Um, so let's go back to, uh, to this fella, which has got a lot of blue on it at the moment, which is fine. Uh, in fact, I mean, but I might try to uh, um, I might try to uh, redden orangey up the uh, the edges of these clouds, and then put the darker colours in the middle. So just ooh, it hasn't done what I wanted, has it? So we've got a lot of blue still on that brush. So we'll see if we can. Overwhelm it with yellow. It's not generally a very successful thing to do. Yellow is a very weak um, pigment. I keep spilling pigment on the corner of the um, 
paper. And there were certain cloudiness to that, isn't there? Um, and uh, up here, and that's not as eye-catching a part of the the sky, but. A um, little bit in the middle of that, more here, and again over here. Let's see if we can um, produce some darkening effect in this cloud. The trouble with doing this is that it looks beautifully it's the word lambent, I think. Um, shiny. When you apply the uh, um, the paint, but it dulls down enormously as as the paint dries. At the moment, what I'm trying to do is to make the uh, shape of the brush um, a bit more conducive to delicacy, because when it's all splayed out it um, produces very broad effects. Oh, let's just take this all the way across, I think. And um, lift it again with the other brush. So quite lifted there and our uh, perspective rays coming out down there. I really need something down the bottom, don't I, as well. Um, horizon line is just too uh, too light. So let's add a bit of gloom down towards the horizon and see if we can meld that with the colour that's up there. And then again um, uh, lighten it. I'm going to go back and forth doing this two or three times, which tends to deaden the colour, so maybe I'll allow myself one more go at this. Um, make sure that I've got a fair amount of red in the, in the paint, I think. See if we can... something fairly dark over on that side. And again, lift some of the colour, some of the pigment out. Um, ooh, that's not to clean the brush a bit. That's better. Clean it again. It's transferring pigment up into this area here, which I don't want. Um, 
that's better. That'll do. Leave it at that, I think. Um, that's quite sufficient. And if there's a little bit of pigment, yes, there is. Good. Um, just put it over here because it needs to uh, to dull down a little bit further away from the sun. And you get all sorts of little bits of atmospheric haze and cloud done by the horizon because of course the light has a long way to travel through the atmosphere down near the horizon. All right now let's see if we can go back to uh, clouds, dark clouds, because I want this to be really quite dark. Necessarily quite as straight edged as it as it was to start with. And like some of the texture in there but I want it to uh, um, I want to darken it so it's a bit of a pity and just adding a bit of water to those edges to uh, to soften them and so I can Carry that on a bit. And uh, let's wet that area. Whoa, that's keep dropping stuff over there. Um, and uh, darken that. So maybe we don't want quite so much in the way of really light colours um, just on the edge of the painting there, or indeed there. So we'll soften that there. Um, and if this hasn't dried out too much already, uh, it's not too bad. Um, soften some of that as well. And going back to our um, main offender on the right hand side here, let's just see if we can get some of those edges to to blend. And I want white edges to the cloud but not paper white I don't think up there. hopefully that's not going to cause blooms going out to, to the, uh, the lower area of cloud Just make it some real dark in there in that cloud. And I think we've got some cloud going around there as well that we want to uh, to use 
used to indicate that the sun is blocked. Um, a bit of dark pigment coming in there. Some complexity up there, but not, um, not quite spilling everything out. Um, softening up there, and there, maybe a bit of uh, lightness in the cloud. Um, various points. I don't quite want such obvious signs of um, the texture of the cloth. But I think that'll do. Uh, and what happens down here? We've got C. Uh, Colour is the sea. It's difficult to tell really. I mean, it's going to be quite a lot of reflection from the sky. So let's go back to this brush and uh, spread some water around. We'll start off with um, sky reflection colours and um, there's the sun reflection down there so I'll go around that with the water and hopefully won't um, fill it up with pigment as I go but we'll see. As a way of going places that you don't expect. So a lot of water. Um, I'm using Fabriano Artistico paper, which I haven't used quite a long time um, uh, and uh, it's allowing the water to sit on the surface quite nicely which I wasn't quite expecting so that is a good thing now yeah, we've got a whole lot of dark pigment in the uh, in the brush at this stage um, I, mean, I, look, I want the uh, the bottom part of the painting to be quite quite dark, but not so much at the top. We seem to have so none of this has really strong detail on it yet, but uh, I'm just letting the pigment that I've picked up from the the side here um, go into these areas, and hopefully I'm not picking up the really dark pigment again. From here and putting it into the uh, uh, area around the sun or the reflection of the sun. So that's probably okay. Now we get um, various uh, bits of water that are, um, I suppose, they're the edges, well, they are the edges of waves, aren't they? They're um, little raised bits. I wonder if I need to use something a little bit finer to do this. Pick up a, a sword brush, which I use almost never. Let's see if that um, will allow me to uh, 
produce these um, wave edges. So. It's going up towards the horizon, so that's just a lot of um, ripples of various sorts. that I want that to be able to lift the pigment that's coming from the uh, to, to uh, sorry to represent the uh, the light from the sun reflecting off the water and then we get various uh, lines of reflection or I suppose they are reflection mm. I want to lift that pigment there but it's just been there for too long I think Let's be a bit more drastic, shall we? Ooh, not that drastic. thing I had in mind. These are ripples in the uh, ripples in the surface of the sand, rather than ripples in the water, that are showing through. And I want this to be darker, darker, darker than it is. So drastic measures. Righto, back with you again. Um, my camera battery ran out of electrons while I was um, busy um, with the part down the bottom here, I think. 
um, and because it was wet and I was working wet into wet I had to, to, to keep going so I've, I've done a, a bit more um, and had a chance to to look at this and there are a couple of things first of all this reflection is going slightly off to the right um, and the Sun is here so there is actually a trap between the reflection and the, the Sun but this white area makes it look as though the Sun is in the middle there somewhere so I'm gonna to have to do something with that to, to tone it down a bit which is possibly going to involve adding to this cloud and also maybe trying to shift the edge of this reflection a bit over to the left. There's a couple of things and also um, it doesn't look wet enough down here. I think I need more darks to uh, um, to bring out the lights as it were. So um, Maybe not darks with a lot of blue in them, but darks with a lot of red in them will be more sensible. Even going much closer in towards the sun. So I'm using this uh, uh, dagger brush in order to uh, um, to use the fact that the uh, the point tends to um, to bend when you start brushing with it, so you get these. It's not as uh, as well defined as some of the other brushes. And you get a more organic look to the. Uh, um, places where you're adding pigment. So, just see how dark that is here. It's fairly, fairly dark. So I just want to just try and skim the surface of the paper I'll try and bring that um, area where the reflection is um, just move it over towards the left a little bit and also darken up some of this reflective area um, to blend it in with the uh, the really dark part of the um, the, the sea and then of course if it's doing that on one side it's liable to be fairly similar on the other not exactly the same but pretty much behaving the same way this is just picking up the uh, high points on the paper to uh, produce a, a sort of hatched effect trying to uh, gradate the uh, the darkness going well, where I am at the moment from darker on the left um, to lighter on the right. I could probably have done this, well even should probably have done this earlier on with the, uh, the initial washes but it's difficult to uh, to visualize it's just um, white paper in front of you how you want these um, what are essentially background colors to look like 
I suppose if I painted dozens and dozens of pictures of uh, reflections of sun on Foxton Beach, then maybe I'd be able to uh, to work out exactly what to do earlier on in the piece. But I don't, so I haven't. And, uh, yeah. There are some reflections coming down, or some ripples, I'm not sure which they'd be. Just to add a bit of interest, artistic verisimilitude to an otherwise bald and unconvincing narrative, as they say. Okay, um, so that I think we'll do for the moment anyway. Um, for this area, and uh, yeah, let's now try to deal with that in some fashion or another. when you use this one just to uh, apply a dollop of water to the uh, area in the vicinity of the sun which is really um, pushing me luck Tease some colour out of the uh, the cloud there. Because uh, one of the characteristics of the sun is that uh, it can get some colour out of here as well. Um, there we are, it's a bit more pigment. Uh, it will. Overwhelm anything. The sun is capable of cutting right through um, the trunk of a tree. And you see the trunk of a tree with the sun directly behind it, and if you can stand to look at it, um, you may see that the trunk sort of disappears with with sun um, apparently shining straight through it. Because the, uh, the amount of light sort of bleeding around the edge of the, uh, the trunk is enough to completely overwhelm your eyes. And they just say, oh, too much, too much, it's just white. They're wrong, of course, but that's what they perceive. All right, that's uh, some of what I wanted to do. I think I might also try to uh, darken. No, I want to put some water, and having just used this brush up. Um, Now 
got pigment in it. Um, I think I want some water up in this region, even perhaps going behind the sun. It's now very wet, so I don't really want to. Uh, um, pigment in there yet. Uh, maybe. And uh, maybe even some up here. I don't know about that. We'll see. So I'm just trying to push the apparent location of the sun further to the right. Um, with the um, colour in this region. All right, well, that's I think that's kind of doing the sorts of things I want. Um, So we've now got more of a, an alignment um, between those items in the painting. I think we need to uh, put a bit of colour into that area. It's, it's, too, it's too white, isn't it? Um, so go back to the dagger brush a bit and... A little bit of yellow in, a bit of orange, a bit of red. And having done all that, I now think I want to um, attend to one of the other things that I was kind of. need of repair, which is that the dark lines that represent some of the um, waves and ripples in the water are uh, a lot less um, so we're just uh, trying to darken up some of the uh, um, ripples in the water that represent well, that represent that are caused by waves, some of the, the dark shadows in the water that are uh, full sized grown up waves back out here in the uh, in the ocean and uh, just the last um, dying ripples as they make their way up the beach. So you get all sorts of little wiggly bits. But, uh, I put them in earlier on and the paper must have been too dry so um, oh, sorry, too wet so that they dispersed um, rather more than I was expecting. And I mean that's not such a big deal because uh, they want to be darker at the bottom where there's less light um, reaching them and lighter on the top so the um, So the fact that the first application um, dispersed in the wet paint has given us this uh, lighter top edge, which is just looks like the water catching slightly, slightly catching the light. 
But as always with doing darks in watercolour, you've got to have the courage of your convictions. You've got to do the darks a whole lot darker than um, you expect them to end up because they're going to get light as the pigment sinks into the fibres of the paper. And you end up with uh, something that's a mixture of the pigment colour and the uh, um, the light of the paper fibres. darkening up some of these ripples that I added a little while ago. The next question is, um, do I want to try and bring some of these ripples into the uh, this really dark area just to um, produce some continuity So um, when I apply the paint, as always, it's really, really dark and it's going to lighten up. So you're never sure whether you're just going to um, dull the appearance of the, pa of the, uh, of the painting with this uh, sort of um, dark on dark. But we'll just we'll be optimistic and we'll hope. Are you being optimistic and hoping? I am. But uh, it's like believing in fairies. If you don't believe in the paint looking darker in this area than the background, then it won't happen. And if you believe in fairies, children, clap. Oh, that's not loud enough. Clap some more. So I'll just have to hope that that uh, stays dark. Well, let's actually let's, let's not hope. Let's let's um, let's find out. I'll use the um, the heat gun to dry it and find out whether it's going to stay dark enough to show up or not. Well, I'm disappointed in you children. You didn't clap loudly enough. So if we can um, just um, get something in this area. So I might just, well, I might just, I'm just about to. Um, there's no might about it. I'm going to use my um, flat brush here to uh, just try and bring up some some ripples above the uh, above the edges of the waves. So it just hopefully will show um, that there's a dark edge below. So that's, as I say, I hope just producing enough um, of a, uh, a light edge there to see the, the ripples and uh, also maybe we'll try Adding some of the blackest black. Using a piece of charcoal. Mm, that's uh, rather broader line than I was 
planning to uh, to apply. Let's knock it back a bit. By putting some paint in that region. Which looks of course as though it's very dark, but uh, well, maybe it'll... I don't know. I was actually thinking of uh, applying charcoal basically all the way along here. Um, that was my initial plan for this, this region. Um, so I might, I might do that anyway. To make it very dark and then we've got just a little bit of colour up there that um, is coming from the sky. The other thing I wanted to do was to try and improve the angle of these um, I don't know what you call these rays of light um, which should be all coming directly from the sun but they look as though they're coming from up here which is just not in the right location at all is it? So let's, um, let's have a go at doing something like that again using the uh, that brush. Um, see if I can find something to uh, to use as a straight edge. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> that angle is completely wrong, isn't it? So let's see if we can. Uh, Pull that over to uh, to there. It's not a nice, clean ray of light, is it? Mm, try using a piece of paper rather than that grotty old towel. See, that one is also supposed to be coming over uh, along that sort of a, a line. Mm -hmm. Too much, far too much pigment in it. wary about um, taking this line right out to the edge like this. don't really want to uh, direct people's attention away from the painting. No, I think it's alright. Um, now, just want to do something um, in the region of the sun. It's too uh, uh, too white or something. So let's just put a bit of yellow in. And the sun isn't actually yellow, the sun is white. And everybody seems to see it as yellow. Here we'd be getting yellow and orangey colours. Um, around the edges of that yellow streak. Yeah. <laughs> Not that down. 
Right, the colour from the other side of the brush. Just yeah, enough so it's not um, completely white on the uh, on the sea. That's sort of um, getting a bit more subtle, I think. this area of C down a bit because it's just a bit light by the edge of the paper and we don't want people's attention to be dragged up to there. So that has pulled that back a bit. And let's give this uh, charcoal idea a whirl. And that's make a sand effect of that sort, but it's very appealing, isn't it? Trouble is, charcoal tends to flake off in all, all sorts of places. I do have some, some fixative, which I might uh, um, spray. And normally, uh, when I'm applying charcoal in order to make something very very dark um, apply the um, the charcoal as I have and then um, paint over it with uh, with watercolor and that acts as a fixative and it stays very very dark um, but you do that and it tends to to spread the uh, uh, the charcoal on this this uh, it's apparent in the I guess it's apparent in the uh, um, the video. Um, it's it's uh, produced a very uh, um, textured sand effect, um, which I'm quite liking. Aside from anything else, um, it's uh, it's bringing out the colour of the uh, um, the area underneath it, which previously didn't look particularly colourful at all. So, I think I might stop. I think I might stop and have a look at it and uh, get back to you um, about it if I need to change it. Or just just to say what I think anyway, uh, but it's looking as though it might be more or less finished at this point. So I'll come back to you if I think that something needs to be done. Bye bye. <laughs>